There's a lot happening in lung cancer right now, from new targeted mutations to new drugs getting approved in this space. And you know, EGFR mutated disease is a perfect example of how quickly the landscape is evolving. Our goal today with this clinical insight segment is to take a deeper dive into a focused topic to get a good handle on the data, how to manage side effects, and importantly, the implications of these new approvals. Hello everyone, I'm Rohit Gosain, and as always, I'm here with my brother and co-host Rahul Gosain. We are both community medical oncologists, and we are the Oncology Brothers. And as Rahul said, that in this clinical insight segment, what we do is dissect the data in hand a little deeper. Today, the topic at hand is to cover the approval of DATO DXD in non-small cell lung cancer space. For this, we have Dr. Aaron Lisberg, a thoracic medical oncologist from UCLA, and his nurse practitioner, Blanca Ledesma from UCLA. This is exciting. This is the first time we are interviewing the team, physician and nurse practitioner. And then we are also thrilled to have Dr. Sarah Sunshine, ophthalmologist from University of Maryland. Aaron, Blanca, and Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. You know, before we get into the data that led to the approval of DATO DXD, as a background for my community colleagues, we can appreciate that DATO DXD, an antibody drug conjugate, is also approved for hormone receptor positive breast cancer. And you know, very likely we'll see this approval in triple negative breast cancer as well. And as we all know, this particular antibody drug conjugate is targeting trope 2, and it delivers that direct stecan payload, which is a topoisomerase inhibitor to these selected cells. And Durexdecan is the same payload that we have for TDXD, trastuzumab Durexdecan, but the target there is HER2. Let's keep that in mind as we go through the data and some of the side effects that we might see with DATO DXD. All right, now let's get into some of the data in hand. Aaron, can you touch on the Tropion Lungo 1 and Lungo 5 study as this is what led to the approval of DATO DXD in this space? Of course. Uh, and again, thank you for inviting uh, me and Blanca uh, to, to join you today from UCLA. Um, so uh, Blanca and I have been very involved in the development of DATO DXD in non-small cell lung cancer and beyond for many years. And you just referenced two of the pivotal trials that essentially led to the approval of DATO DXD in EGFR mutant advanced metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. So let's go through both trials uh, briefly and quickly. So the TLO5 trial uh, was a single-arm phase two study. This looked at patients with advanced metastatic non-small cell lung cancer who had actionable genomic alterations, the most common uh, patient population of which were EGFR patients. So there were uh, 78 patients on tropium uh, lung 05 that had EGFR mutant disease. These were patients that had received uh, had exhausted targeted therapies, which in the case of EGFR disease was typically osimertinib monotherapy, had received prior chemotherapy, um, and then were eligible to enroll on the trial. So um, these patients were on a single arm trial. Um, the approval actually uh, came from a pooled analysis from both of these trials. So the Tropion Lung 01 study was a phase three study. This looked across the spectrum of advanced metastatic non small cell lung cancer. It looked at both non squamous and squamous disease patients with actionable genomic alterations like EGFR and patients without. Um, the patients with EGFR disease that were treated with DATO DXD, there were 39 patients uh, that were in this pooled EGFR mutant analysis that led to the approval of DATO DXD in this patient population. So we had a total of 117 patients. From Tropion Lung 01, it was a similar patient population. The patients with EGFR disease must have exhausted TKI therapy, must have received chemotherapy, and then could or could not have received immunotherapy to enroll. Well, Aaron, thanks so much for going over that. Few things to reiterate here. First of all, what led to the approval of this drug in this space is the overall response rate, which was about 45%, and median duration of response, which was about six to seven months. But this approval is also to stress is for all EGFR mutations, whether common sensitizing mutations or uncommon mutations, including exon 20. Blanca, when you see these patients and they do meet the inclusion criteria and your plan is to move forward with DATO DXD, what are the common side effects that you bring up to your patients here? The most common adverse reactions that we see and that is important for us to educate our patients are in the ILD or the pneumonitis, uh, the stomatitis, the mucositis, or um, the ocular effects that Dr. Sunshine is going to further elaborate. But really to set up those expectations is so pivotal to our patients and that we be proactive, that we empower our patients at a time that they really have little control and that we can be proactive rather than reactive and really giving them those tools to prevent these 
these adverse effects, if at all possible, did we give them the education? This is where we as APPs, as nurses, nurse navigators, pharmacists, we can really be proactive with the education in preventing these adverse effects altogether and the education portion with their patients with the eye drops, doing them four times a day to prevent the ocular effects, um, not using the contact lenses, the ILD pneumonitis, sitting up where is their baseline, because the reality is that our patients will have respiratory symptoms at baseline. The hopes is that they deviate for the better, not for the worse. And if they are, that we start doing an evaluation of why are they having respiratory symptoms for the worse. Is it disease progression? Is it infection? Or is it ILD pneumonitis? And we start doing the imaging. And that if it is ILD pneumonitis, um, that we start um, intervening and start do, um, interrupting treatment and doing the corticosteroids based on the um, severity of the treatment. Um, and if they do have any um, mucositis, dermatitis, if, again, the importance of being proactive, not reactive with this adverse effect, that we start doing the oral steroid rinse four times a day, that we start doing it um, with social cues so that they can remember when they wake up, before they go to bed, when they walk the dog, Doing it with meals is not realistic for our patients. They're not eating three square meals a day. Um, maybe if they get one good two meals a day is, is great. But rather with social cues, alarms, um, there's caretakers or family members that they can do this proactively doing cryotherapy can really be a great tool when they're getting their treatment to prevent it altogether, um, that they do good oral hygiene because when they're really focused on their disease, they really just forget to do the basic oral hygiene. We have to remember that we are giving them steroids and they are going to be susceptible to other secondary infections, so that's going to be really important. But again, the education, the expectation, this is going to be very pivotal.